Welcome back, Michael Dennis here again. In this video I'm going to show you how to make the filling stitches on these coordinate or outline threads that you've already made. The thing we need to decide is where to start and finish our first row of stitches, sometimes called the foundation row. It is important to get this row right because that will affect the way the stitches run down the rest of the petal. I have marked on the pattern, although you can't see it so well now, where to start and finish your first line with a red line. The start of the line there and the end of the line just there. You first need to thread up your ballpoint needle with the thread that you're going to use for the filling stitches. To start your filling stitches you need to run the needle and thread up through the couching stitches on the side. Just pull the thread up so that it's just under the last couching stitch, just here. I've also run the needle through those last two stitches on the side of the coordinate so that the needle comes up on the inside of the space. So we're now ready. We've got the thread on the inside of the space. We're now ready to make our first line of buttonhole stitches. To make your buttonhole stitches, run the needle under the coordinate and over this thread. And then pull the loop up. Watch how the loop is formed and stop when you get to that sort of tension. Don't go any tighter or any looser than that. For this particular thread, that is about the right size and the right tension you need. Hold it with your thumb and make the next stitch. Pull it up carefully, watch it. Got a bit of fluff in there, let's get rid of that. Just pull it up until it's the same tension as your first stitch. Hold it with your thumb and make the next stitch. The stitch we are making here is corded single brussels. So it's a row of buttonhole stitches all close together, no gaps between them, and equal spacing of the stitches. Now this couching stitch here is in the way of making my next stitch. So you have to make a judgement whether you go this side of it or this side of it. There's no hard and fast rule, it just depends on the thread you're using and the way it's spaced. I'll go the other side. Again, just pull it slowly, just take your time. While you're learning, it's better to take your time and get them even than rushing and spoiling it. You'll find that as you progress you'll get faster anyway. So just pull it up to the same sort of tension as the others. Hold it with your thumb and make the next stitch. Just continue like that along the row. At the end of the row you need to take your needle and thread under the coordinate at the side. And it needs to be adjacent to the bottom of that first row. Now 
Again, don't pull this too tight. And then loop it under again. And pull this one tight. Then we need to lay the thread back across the space underneath that row of stitches. So take your needle and thread out on the other side and then take the th needle and thread through again and pull that tight. Now this cord doesn't want to be too loose and it doesn't want to be so tight that it's going to pull this side cordonet over. It just needs to be firm. Because we're working on a curve here, our length of stitches are going to get longer as we progress down this space. To increase the number of stitches, we can work one stitch now into the cordonet and the second one into the loop that goes to the first stitch. So we're putting through the loop and over that cord that we laid across. So exactly the same as the first row. Pull up your stitches, make sure they're the right tension and size. Then we're working now into the loop of the stitch above. That's this loop here and over this cord. Into the loop and over the cord, under the cord. Into the loop over the cord. Now you continue like this along the row. I've now got to the end of the first row where I've got loops on the stitches above but I've still got this amount of space to fill. So you can use the loop of the thread that went from the last loop on your first row out to the side. So you can go under that one and over the cord. That will give you one extra stitch. And then you can work another one then into the cordonet. And then go out through the side again. Loop it round again. Pull it tight. Lay the cord across the space and out through the other side. Loop it through again. And start your next row. The curve is decreasing now as we come round this bend. So there's no need to put your first stitch over the cordonet. You can go into the first loop. the row above and make your first stitch and then start working into the loops of each stitch and carry on like that all the way down the space. So I'll do a few more rows 
and then I'll show you how to finish off a thread and start a new one.